hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, it's part 7 of the new excavator build. Well, thus far on this build, we are at 73, just under 73 hours of work on the build. We are definitely getting there. As I've said before, there is a lot to cover. There's a lot to do on today's show. It's all going to start off with that deck cabinet that we were supposed to do last week. So let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what I've got in mind. Well, this can be a confusing piece to make when you look at it. We have this little cabinet section here, which is a recess that's like right kind of off to the one side. But how do you cut that out? It would be a tough routing. You could do it with a template. Um, the choice is yours, but let me show you the method that I'm going to use. I have a blank cut here, and this blank is the two and an eighth wide. It is 27 30 seconds thick, but it is actually three inches long, not the two inches that they asked for here, because I'm going to give myself a little bit to play with. So the first thing that we want to do here for this section is if we measure from the furthest point here in our recess, back to this back corner. It's actually a quarter of an inch. So for what I'm gonna do for this project, I'm gonna use a little bit of artistic license. I'm going to actually make this 5 sixteenths of an inch deep. And at 5 sixteenths of an inch on our blank, I'm gonna lop the end off of it. So the first thing I want to do before doing that is I just want to place a couple marks here on our board so that we know which end goes with which. So just some identifying marks so that we can glue this back together when we're done. So first thing I'm going to do, take it over to the table saw and cut a 5 16 inch piece off the end of our deck cabinet blank. So the next thing that I've done is I have photocopied this front view and I have attached it to a piece of quarter inch hardboard and cut out our little recess here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up. This is actually a marking template. So I'm going to line it up with the edges and mark the inside here so that I know where that shelf or that little insert or that recess is and then I'm going to take it over to the scroll saw and cut it out. And with that now we will put this back together making sure that our lines here are right and that we have it the right way. We will verify our mating surfaces here, give them a very light sanding and then we are going to glue and clamp this back together, making sure to clean up all your squeeze out from in here if there is any. Then set it aside and let it completely dry. Well, if we look here, the bottom section is two inches long and the top is one and seven eighths. And you can see here, there's a straight piece here that comes straight down. So I've measured that and it's one eighth in, obviously, two inches minus one and seven eighths, but I've measured the depth of it and it is one eighth of an inch down. So we are gonna do that over at the table saw with a stop block on our miter fence and a height on our blade of one eighth of an inch. And that gives us something that looks like this. So at this point now, we can take it over to the belt sander. This is a very, very slight curve here. We're gonna very carefully sand that. It is not an exact science here. This curve is not a mating piece. It's nothing more than decorative. I don't even care if it's the exact same radius as what this is, as long as there is some kind of a curve. So just Take your time, take it easy. If you don't have a belt sander, you can do it by hand with sanding blocks, but get this profile here on the front, sand it up so that it looks, well, something like that. And you should end up with something that looks like that. Doesn't that look great? All right, so I'm pleased with that, with the way that turned out. Um, we now need to put the shelves in. We can see them here in this part of the drawing. We can also see them on the profile here. So what I have done is I have taken some 
1 16th of an inch stock and cut some pieces that are the same width as what our opening is here and they are a quarter inch deep. I may sand those down to trim them up depending on how they fit. But the way that I got the 16th of an inch stock is actually it was quarter inch thick stock that I lined it up so that when I cut the pieces, the strips, this 16th of an inch ended up on the outside of the blade. This was actually the off cut that I was able to use. So in order to glue these in, I'm going to use a 1 8 inch setup block to space the bottom shelf and then I'm going to use a 16 inch spacer block to space the next shelf. And it's just a matter of gluing them in place, a little bit of glue on the back of each shelf and then pushing them in, gluing them in place and letting them set up before you move on to the next one. And once the glue is dry enough, we can just carefully remove our setup blocks out of there. And look at that. Doesn't that look fantastic? So with a little bit of patience and a little bit of uh, help from setup blocks, you can get these things perfectly spaced and have them looking uh, absolutely spectacular. So just take your time, do things the way that you feel comfortable. And there's more than one way to do things. This is not the only method. If you have a different method that works for you, by all means, please use it. So the last thing to do here, guys, on this piece is, as we saw in the drawings, it is two inches long. And you know that I made it longer. So we will take this over to the table saw. I will set the stop on the miter fence at two inches and we will lop this thing off at its final length. Then we can just do a dry fit over here on our base assembly. Well, I think now I want to take the time to glue this whole assembly together, or at least the pieces we have so far. So you want to use your deck subassembly exploded view as well as the deck subassembly section view. That's a mouthful to say. And you want to glue this together according to the placement that they show you. Now, what I would suggest is these curved pieces here, put them aside for now. And for starters, just concentrate on your main base. That would be these pieces here. Don't do anything other than these. Get these against a straight edge or a flat surface. Make sure they're all perfectly aligned and square and glue them together. Now, one thing that I would suggest is to take a scrap piece of 1 8 inch dowel and feed it through the holes that are in these two bracket pieces and these small little pieces that we cut earlier. This is going to help with alignment. And I know that we may not be able to get it out properly later after it's glued together, but that's okay. I can cut it out if I have to. At least I'll know that my dowels will all be lined up properly and everything is going to mesh when it comes to the final assembly and getting the arm of the excavator in place. So for starters, I'm going to apply glue to all of these surfaces here, get this assembly put together and clamped and let this fully dry. Well, this assembly here is pretty much dried up. Uh, I had to give the bottom a little bit of a sanding because we had some squeeze out that really looked horrible here on the bottom. So that's no big deal. As well, these pieces here are free floating. These were not glued in, these little brackets, because we may, may need to make some adjustments later. So while we're waiting for this center assembly here to dry, I would suggest working on your counterweights. Um, I would not suggest trying to glue them one by one onto your base. What we're going to do is use the flat surface of my assembly board here, and we are going to glue them all together like this, using our straight edge to make sure they're all aligned. We will clamp them in place and let this dry up as one whole assembly. Now you want to try to avoid squeeze out on these pieces up at the top 
because squeeze out up there will get into, remember we sanded that little profile there to get definition between these sections. And if squeeze out comes into that section or those uh, profiles rather, they're very difficult to clean out. So try to avoid it, use glue sparingly. You don't need much to hold these pieces together. So we're gonna clamp that up now and let that fully dry as well. Now, if you're having trouble with the placement of some of these pieces because the deck subassembly drawing and the deck subassembly section view are not a one-to-one -one scale, don't worry about it. You can head to page 10 and on that sheet 10, you will see a one-to-one -one scale of the layout of these pieces. So you will be able to know exactly where to place them when gluing. And once your counterweight assembly is dried up, we can glue that on to the back end of our excavator. Um, you want to make sure at this point, after you get this put in place, that it is square. It should be, we've done enough dry fits, but stranger things have happened. So get this in place, verify its squareness to the bottom here, or your base, and clamp it in place and let it dry. Well, while we're waiting for those counterweights to dry, um, remember those 3 8 diameter holes we drilled in there? Well, what I've done is taken some 3 8 diameter dowel. I have sanded it so that there's a little bit of a chamfer on the top side. And I have cut them so that they are just slightly above our counterweight section when they're sunk into these holes. I put a little too much glue in there. And while we're waiting for them to dry up, we will place our little pieces of dowel there and put them in place just like that and that will be our two pieces uh, that are shown on the plans that I said we had or I would use a different method so those are done and now we just wait for this counterweight to dry up and then we're going to glue on our cabinets so in order to glue on the cabinets, we're just going to use our straight edge. We'll place our assembly tight up against that straight edge, apply a little bit of glue here to the back and a little bit to this edge right here, sit it in place and basically butt it up against our counterweights and our straight edge, trying to avoid squeeze out if we can and then let it set up and it should be just like that. We can then repeat the process on the other side with this larger set of cabinets. And then finally, we can glue in our deck cabinet and our little trim piece here that we made earlier. Again, being careful to be sparing with the glue. Um, we want to avoid squeeze out as much as possible but get those in place. Well, now I think I would like to put my base here onto our tracks. So I've made the base connector pin and it is nothing more than a half inch dowel with a hole drilled in the center and then a quarter inch dowel with this one eighth inch hole for another retaining pin. So what we're going to do is we're gonna slide this up inside our track assembly and then the way it goes is your thickest smallest disc is first and then your next size up and then your biggest disc and then this square that we made when we were making all the pieces for our base and then once you get that on there this whole assembly slides in place right here just like this and then a retaining pin, a 1 8 inch retaining pin will go in that hole there. I can see already that I have this hole way, way too high. So you want the hole to be just level with the base of this base here so that it will keep it uh, firmly in position. 
So I'm going to re-drill that 1 8 diameter hole and I will uh, put the pin in and I'll show you what we have at that point in time. And there you go. Hopefully you can see that 1 8 inch retaining pin right in there that goes through that quarter inch dowel and holds this assembly in place and allows it to rotate. Um, so I'm not going to glue this in just yet and I would suggest that you do not either as there may be other adjustments to do. Um, we don't want to get into a situation where now this thing is glued together and we can't change it if we have to modify things. So moving right along, I think we're going to move on at this point in time to this cab area and the top cover that goes at the back of our assembly here. So I'm going to start with the deck cover top and I've cut a blank 3 16th of an inch thick to the dimensions that they give here on the plans. And it's now time to route all of these <laughs> vent grooves. Um, this is a nightmare of a routing job. Um, so I would suggest the very first thing to do is to mark out these lines all on your piece here, just so that we know exactly where they're going to go. Well, I have all of my layout lines done on here to show me where to route these recesses um, or these grooves. So what I have over here at the router table, I have my 1 16th inch router bit. It's set to a height of 1 16th of an inch. And I have a start and stop block installed here that will coincide with these longer grooves. So all I'm going to do is place this up against my start block. On the spinning bit, we'll lower it down and then we'll run the pass all the way over. Lift it up, remove our piece and shut our router down. After that, we will reset our fence for the next one and then repeat the process. You will do that a total of six times to get all of these grooves uh, routed out in your cover. So I'm not going to bore you with filming the entire thing. Um, you will continue this for all of those and then for these ones right here. There are 10 of them I believe. The only difference with these ones is that you will have to change your start and stop blocks to coincide with this shorter length. That's the only difference. At some point in time, you may want to use a push pad to put this through um, if you're not comfortable with your hands being over top of this. Or like I showed you earlier, use some uh, pencil erasers and that will give you the extra distance, but yet the rubber and the grip and control for pushing it through your router bit. Take your time on this, guys. All your concentration is needed for this. Um, it's a delicate process and one slip and the whole thing is ruined. So keep your, your mind on your task here and uh, I'll see you when it's done. Well, one thing that I forgot to mention and then in turn forgot to do it in my own routing for the first set is you need to make sure that you're moving your fence on your router table equally on both sides. Um, if not, your start and your end point will change as they go off kilter and you'll end up with this sort of a thing. You'll see that uh, I've got this escalating routing, but I'm actually going to leave that. I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, we'll call it a design element. Now, for this one here, uh, I made sure of that equal movement of the fence on the left and the right, and you can see that all of the routings are right on the money. So just be sure that you check that as you go. So what we can do now is I've marked for this quarter inch diameter through hole. We can do that. And as well, this little mark right here is another 1 16th by 1 16th deep router uh, run that is right through that entire width across there. And then we need to put a rabbit all the way around this piece. So just like we did for some of the small rabbits on our deck cabinet pieces, 
Uh, we're going to do the same thing over here at the table saw with the blade raised to 1 16th of an inch and the fence set so that when this piece passes through, it will allow the blade to strike the stock 1 16th of an inch in. So I'm just going to, for the sides, run it through, turn it 180 degrees, run it through again, and for the width, um, for those, we can actually use our miter fence and just set up a stop to cut the same rabbit all the way around. And there we go, a dry fit and everything is looking great. Now, um, the dry fit is what showed me a problem and I don't think it's a problem with the pattern. I think somewhere I've made a mistake and that's okay, that, that happens but it wouldn't fit. It would appear that my small cabinet here is too far back, so maybe too short or something. Uh, maybe this long piece here was miscut, I don't know, but my top cover actually didn't fit. So you can see here, I've had to cut a 1 16th inch groove um, remove that rabbit section basically. I did that over at the scroll saw and I've made it so that it will fit in place now. So just pay attention and you know what guys, if you make a mistake, you make a mistake. I mean, don't sweat it. Um, we all do it and honestly, the biggest thing about it is when you make a mistake on these models, it's time to go into recovery mode and decide how you can salvage that. If you can salvage it, then that's great. If not, don't sweat it. Scrap the piece and make it again. It's no big deal. All right, so let's move on with the other panels for our top cover. So the next piece that we're going to make will be this deck cover number two. I don't think we need a video of it, guys. We have um, the exact same process that we've used to get these rabbits on the sides here. They're 1 16th by 1 16th. So we can just cut those pieces, uh, or cut that piece rather, and then cut our rabbits in. As well, this deck uh, cover bottom and the deck cover bottom number two. We can cut both of those uh, just at the table saw and then I'll see you when you get those done because from there we need to assemble them to form the cover of the top of our excavator. Well, at this point, I'm just assembling the pieces of this top cover. Now that will include um, the deck cover bottom, both piece one and piece two and the two deck covers. But there is a detail here that I almost missed. I actually found it when I was getting the measurements for the placement of these pieces from sheet 10. And you can see them here. Uh, so if you're confused about where these pieces go because the exploded drawing isn't really that good, you can get the measurements right from here. But anyway, I noticed right in this little corner here that there is one little detail and I checked on the drawing and sure enough it is there. So you just want to make sure in that front edge you put another 1 16th by 1 16th inch rabbit on the bottom front edge. So I didn't want you to miss that. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to continue. We're going to glue this last piece in place here and then that will be the cover that will sit in here. And when you're done, you should have something that looks like this. And that just sits in place, just like that there. And that's it. Now, that m will get glued in later. For now, we're going to leave it loose fitting because uh, there's more to do. So, there you go. There is the cover assembly finished for the back end of the excavator. And once again, unfortunately, we've run out of time. And while it doesn't seem like we got much accomplished, um, we got the entire model glued together as far as what we have built so far. And we've got the covers for the top. We have almost the entire rear of the body complete. So we are definitely making some serious progress. Um, those routings, guys, in those top covers, they can be tricky. 
So take your time. Just relax and do it bit by bit. There's a reason I didn't film a bunch of it other than boring people. Um, I really needed to concentrate on what I was doing. And even with the concentration, I still forgot the step of moving the fence equal, equal dimensions on both sides to avoid that whole start and stop shifting. But, oh well, live and learn. You know what? It doesn't matter how good you are. You will always make mistakes. And it's, it's all in how you accept them. It's all in how you learn from them. And it's all about how you move on. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. If you haven't already, guys, check out the website at acutabovewoodworkings.com and let me know what you think. Drop me a line. Once again, I want to thank you for tuning in this week. I truly appreciate it. Um, I hope you're going to try this for yourself. I hope you're enjoying the content I'm bringing to you guys. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.